world, I'm Maya Sundermeyer, and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. So far, I have shared my experiences with you of what it's like for me to live with autism. Other times, I have given my two cents on what's going on with autism in the media based on how I see things and how they should be done versus how they should not be done. And finally, I like to cover topics that I'm passionate about that have absolutely nothing to do with autism whatsoever. And um, I am doing a series of blogs on DragonCon 2014 since um, it is only four days away now. And uh, I thought it would be really, really fun for me to um, share some other um, areas of DragonCon other than updates. And what better way to do that than talk about my first experiences of learning about DragonCon to also going to my very first convention and having some experiences there. So here goes. Um, in uh, 2004, I uh, learned of a, a, an adult a support group for other people that live on the autism spectrum, like myself. And um, everybody there functions at my level, and they, uh, they all turned out to be a bunch of geeks. And uh, it turned out that a couple of them had gone to um, a convention called DragonCon. And one of those people dressed up as uh, Samurai Jack, and another person dressed up as Princess Leia. And I thought, Dragon Con, Dragon Con, what is Dragon Con? Is this a sci-fi convention? I thought, I really need to go. So, uh, a couple of months later, I was talking to my aunt during Labor Day weekend 2004, because I had no idea when Dragon Con was. And she said that a close friend of hers uh, is a writer, and she uh, attended a uh, writer's, uh, a, a special writer's workshop every single uh, Labor Day weekend. And I asked wh where it was, and she said it was at Dragon Con. And I said, oh, yeah, I, there are two people from that adult support group that I like to go to that also attend Dragon Con. And so my face lit up, and it made me even more excited to go. And I almost went in 2005, but around that time, I had started taking classes during uh, uh, during uh, August of 2005, and I was taking beginning algebra, and I wanted to be really solid in that area. I mean, and I'll, I'll talk about that another time. But anyway, uh, in 2006, I finally got my opportunity when... I asked my aunt if her friend was going to Dragon Con, and she said, I don't know, why don't you um, ask her yourself? And then I procrastinated on the matter, and my aunt, and it turned out that uh, my aunt's friend Savvy asked the same question, if I was going to go to Dragon Con. So my aunt uh, asked me um, the next morning after she had spoken on the telephone with her, and she said, do you want to go to Dragon Con? And I said, yes. So she bought my first ticket to Dragon Con 2006, and I was really excited about it. And I, when I went, I ended up staying with uh, Savvy and her husband. And uh, the first time Savvy and I drove to Amarta Station, and we got in the car, we got on the train, and uh, we uh, took it back and forth from the convention. And then the, the other two days, uh, her husband drove us. But uh, when I was there, I ended up uh, bumping into Captain Jack Sparrow on my first time, and um, I said I liked his costume and. He said, I like your costume too. And he ended up giving me a great big hug. And I said, oh, wow. And he ended up uh, asking me what my costume was. And I said, I'm not in costume. And he said, well, why not? And I froze because I didn't know quite what to say. And uh, Savvy answered for me and said, well, that's because this is her new convention. Uh, her, her, this is her first year. And he said, oh, really? Congratulations. We have a Dragon Con virgin. Dragon Con virgin. And, of course, I thought that was so funny. And then I ended up going down to the Tolkien track with Savvy because she was trying to walk me down there so I could uh, figure out how to navigate myself around. And uh, when I was down there, I ended up uh, bumping into another cosplayer, and uh, I thought he was Obi-Wan Kenobi, and it turned out he was dressed up as, um, uh, what was it, Anakin Skywalker from uh, Star Trek, from Star Wars, uh, not Attack of the Clones, and um, Revenge of the Sith. But to me, he looked more like an Obi-Wan Kenobi. And um, he said that he was uh, getting ready to change out of his costume and dress up as Orlando Bloom. And I told him about Jack Sparrow giving me a hug and teasing me about my costume. And he was playing with me and he said, oh, bloody Sparrow. So, and I thought that was really fantastic. Um, 
Let's see, what other things do I remember about the con? I also remember uh, playing game, playing some sort of a racing game with um, one of the people I, I met from that support group, and um, he got frustrated really, really easy, and we're playing the game, and he had a hard time communicating with me, and I had a hard time understanding, and I kept tapping, <laughs> tapping the little pigs, and what did I say, Maya? No tapping! <laughs> so, uh, that was down in the gaming area. Um... Let's see, what else do I remember? I also remember going to um, a Star Wars band, and uh, instead of Aerosmith, it was a band called Aerosith, and they were all dressed up like the villains from Star Wars, and it was pretty funny. And they didn't sing, they all, uh, they were all lip syncing, and they were playing different clips from, uh, from the movie in, in addition to regular music. And then they had, uh, they had a Star Wars costume contest, and then they had a ba had a bunch of people um, dressed up like the Cantina band, and they were playing the the Cantina songs, and they were pretending to play the instruments. So that was quite fascinating. But I also remember feeling quite overwhelmed because I did not know what to expect from the convention. So um, if you guys uh, would like to um, reply and uh, tell me your stories, you guys are more than welcome to post down below. Um, until next time, my name is Maya Sundermeyer and I'm signing off now. Bye.